Hello there, everybody. It's an absolute pleasure to be back here with the Afterlife Nexus crew for here for Afterlife Hotel Nexus, a Afterlife Wandering Soul series that we are doing here on Girls Around These Worlds. My name is Angela Lemos Mogrovejo, I use she, her pronouns, and I am the GM for this series. So we are going to get back into the next session, uh, which I have titled Session 3, Front Row Seats because my players ask for kaijus, and uh, I will give them kaijus because they deserve kaijus. But before we get into that, I'm going to quickly let them uh, go around. And uh, actually, to expedite things, I'm just going to call on folks one at a time, because this might be a very packed session and we want to get into it. So just introduce yourself, pronouns, character, character pronouns. Simple as that. So let's go with uh, Gina. Go first. Hi, I'm Gina. Uh, that is she, her pronouns. I am playing Antonia, who's also she, her pronouns. Yeah. <laughs> the, pizzazz, the pizzazz on that is uh, worthy of a legendary bard. Anyways, carrying on with uh, also worthy of a legendary bard, though perhaps more like goth, sad emo bard, uh, Alta Mirage, you're up, bud. That's me. Hi, I'm Alta Mirage. I'm they, them. I'm playing Ophir. Sad boy, he, they. That's actually written officially in my notes for as a GM. Sad boy. Just yeah. perpetually. Uh, it's but my favorite sad. It's, it's a good flavor. You just, I don't know why, all of my characters just add copious amounts of sad in them. The the seasoning has not stopped being added for several years. Um, But uh, also a bit of enjoyable, fantastic presence to the table around Diana Moon. Hello, I go by Diana Moon online. I use she, her pronouns. I play Captain Jimena, who uses she, they pronouns. And it is in Wonderful. A lot of trouble. And last, <laughs> a lot of trouble, especially for Jean Paul. I don't know why. I don't know what my players' intentions are whatsoever. And last but certainly not least, the undeniably impressive and wonderful DK. Hi, I'm DK. I am she, they, and I am playing Quest, who is also she, they. Fantastic. So before we jump right back into the scene of- And the of, last, uh... last, last person. <laughs> yes, sorry. I almost forgot. Gee, I wonder why. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, this I'm, is now I'm a core kidding. memory. <laughs> My name is Aida. My pronouns are she and her. I am playing Ren, whose pronouns are they, them. And they hold grudges. I have now decided. I am in danger now. This is going to end poorly for me in real life. But- uh if I'm not back next week, you know who cost it. Um, anyways, so before we get into our content, uh, our session and such properly, and before, uh, after I have chosen not to skip either, because I remembered, uh, I want to go through the content warnings real quick for everyone. Uh, Afterlife Wandering Souls is a system that inherently deals intensely with themes of forgotten memories, memory loss, trauma, death and the kind of more bittersweet and uh, unpleasant elements regarding life and meaning. It is a very existentialist kind of game and such. If you're familiar with those kinds of themes, if you are not comfortable viewing that kind of content, this might not be the series for you to tune into. Also, our group has added additional content that includes aspects of things like neglectful families, Temperature-related mishaps of the freezing variety, and also pretty abusive and toxic relationships. These are all things that come up in different aspects of people's stories, and as such, there will be a lot of stuff happening. Be mindful if this is not the series for you. We respect the fact that you are watching out for your own mental health if you feel you cannot engage with this material in that same way. However, all of that out of the way, we're going to get into properly our third session, front row seats. So last our group left off, they had taken some time to enjoy themselves, uh, enjoy one another's company in a variety of different ways, mostly learning one another's little habits with teas, talking to the staff, Antonia having a rather beautiful moment uh, in the Arboretum, and just sort of getting to know a lot of the interesting beings and individuals who inhabit the hotel in many, in many different ways, in their own ways, attempting to take care of the guests as much as they can. 
In addition to that and a rather hearty, robust meal that was consumed, the group managed to begin the process of perusing limbos of the gallery of memories in order to go through and find the fragments of their own past lives that they have forgotten. As part of that, they ended up in a world of floating islands mid-fall and were caught by a giant techno-organic uh, mechanical bird that uh, if you've ever played Horizon Zero Dawn, you have a rough sense of the aesthetic. But upon being tent taken to a rest stop floating island and finding themselves amidst some other interesting characters, two of your party immediately choosing to be useless lesbians, uh, of the truest order, uh, and two of your party beginning to interact with the murals that were forms of communal and traveler history making, two of you found things which signified for you a fragment of long forgotten memories, both tinged with different elements of rather pleasant and unpleasant experiences. And as a result of that, uh, both Ophir and Quest are just kind of gone. <laughs> They're kind of knocked out for a bit. Just, uh, yes, pure pure deuces. We out. And all of this, while Antonia has been the first to become aware of not only are there massive elemental kaiju-sized birds fighting in the air that were then followed by a what appears to be solar eclipse of some kind in which... Uh, you know, a giant fog wall has begun to roll into the land below as the whole party is many, 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 many miles up in the air. That is where you all pick up as uh, two of your party are out. I believe it was Jimena coming out to see Antonia and the party, uh, the other two party members passed out. Ren was, I believe, performing for our lovely, uh, very butch cook that we have in the rest stop, which, you know, more power to them. That's, there are many, many places one could be. Being next to a butch cook and performing for them ain't a bad one. But, uh, Jimena, how do you react immediately to seeing two of your party members just plumb passed out? Don't see, appear to be harm in harm's way or anything yet. Nothing seems to have hurt them. They just seem to have passed out. Antonia, have you given them given them notice about the whole everything okay. my first question about this is is like how like how bad does this feel does this feel like te like terrible doom gloom ominous thing or is it like how like what is the vibe here let like me how put concerned it to you, should i let be? Me, let, me, <laughs> let me put it to you this way the sky was pure blue no real clouds to see and now is gone to like bloody red. Oh, okay, okay, that part. Okay, it's like there, there's like eclipse, and then there's like bloody red. That's like important. Oh, the detail. eclipse okay. is blood is blood red tinged because we're if we're you all wanted drama this week, you yeah, get drama. Okay. This you okay. asked for this. I must deliver. I am but a yeah, servant okay. of I'm my gonna, players' wishes. I'm gonna run around the house looking for because I feel like. I don't know what the spatial dynamics. I, I will. I will point this out to whoever is coming around. Except nobody's. Everybody's passed out. Okay. 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 I don't. I don't know what. Uh, I don't know what Humana is doing right now. <laughs> Humana, you are now coming into this moment of Antonia just going. Okay. 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 I feel. Like, you should be knowing what's going on. You're supposed to have been the responsible one. No, I don't think I know. I don't. I See, things are happening very fast. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I feel Did they like... harm each other? I don't know. Did they knock each other I out? I turned around. I just got here, okay? I just got here. Okay. I'm more concerned with you know, the sky turning weird colors, maybe more important. Can I try? Well, how, like, we're not on water, so we should be fine. How, how 
big. Did, can I pick up one of these? <laughs> I guess I'm going like to go Ophir for Ophir. Probably. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to Ophir is probably a lot smaller. I'm going to check. Can I try to pick up Ophir? Yes, you there. <laughs> They're both within range to pick up if you would like to do that. I am just going to, however, note, uh, you do hear Meaty, uh, who was the only other person really outside. Everyone else was in this rest stop, which is a reminder. The actual yeah. island space itself, think like a rest stop by the side of the road. Yeah. Like kind of space, like the parking lot and yeah. everything. Like it's sizable, but it's not like yeah, massive either. Yeah. So, but there's enough space inside that folks have mostly congregated in there. The only other one who was the writer, Meaty, is sort of like, um, what, what, what? Uh, no, that's that's bad. That's real bad. That's yeah. Really bad. I I'm going to try to pick up a fear. I don't know if I, I don't know if she's physically strong enough to do that, but she's gonna try to pick up Ophir. He try like not pounds. Try not to drag them on the floor. And bring them inside. Yeah, uh, other yeah, people I are starting go to notice. To, <laughs> to quest and first double check that they have a pulse. You know. Yeah. No. <laughs> they're they're, they're both. They're both. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> it's like oh, fear's fine with either outcome at this point. But also, <laughs> no quest. If you check, they do. Uh, they do have a pulse. They does seem fine. Just very much passed out and mm -hmm. the book basically gives a description of catatonic state so you're just kind of like they're knocked out of it oh boy. and other people inside like seeing you bring people in who are entirely passed are like what the hell is going on and then people are looking outside and beginning to see the mess that is coming because uh which one do we go with yeah, let's go with that one. Uh, out of nowhere, seemingly, just kind of appearing from the air itself, what looks like a massive gnarled tree just straight up meteors into another portion of the island. Our island, the one we're on. Yes. Kabu shaking. Yes, uh, it also appears to open up to reveal that there's some sort of green humanoid-like creature that is now flapping its wings, and there is a swirl of air butterflies that are beginning to emerge and pass through the rest area. And anyone who's seemingly oh, caught within the oh, burst of butterflies uh, is now screaming and running away in pain. Oh boy. I have um, a feeling that Ren might not be performing anymore. I think they would still have tried before the massive it collision and would have sacrificed a brain cell to consider maybe continuing nonetheless, but thankfully the thought would have passed. It's a little hard to to avoid noticing a massive gnarled tree meteoring into the side of the island. But it was considered. Yes. Yeah, I think when the ground shook, like, Humana was carrying... Humana, I found out, is not very strong, but is hardy because Captain, you know? So it was Bridal carrying Quest, and as soon as, like, the shake happened, immediately went down to their knees, so that way, if they happen to drop Quest, it's not that far of a as far as the distance and it's like and just immediately is like um insert you know sailor reference of like hold on to something like you know like forgetting we're not on a boat right now but on an yeah. floating island yeah uh that actually might be very good advice because uh you do see meaty like running back in, I, I I could not for the life of me seeing the video. I, I rewatched our last session. I couldn't remember what I named the bird. I think it was Marty. Someone who took notes probably remembers. Mar Mar Marty, indeed, Marty. Marty, haha, -ha, I remember. My memory is not entirely shit. Uh, Marty is just kind of panicking outside, but goes in a very, like, we're talking like two story sized mechanical bird somewhere around that range, and is now just draping his arms around the rest stop because 
right before he does that, you just see Medium go, everyone hit the deck! And you see there is a pair of floating islands that have now begun to orbit in such a fashion that they are veering very close to your island. What do you all do? Is so this normal? Is out right now. Does this pass? While like hands behind her head under a table or two. Find out. Is, Somebody call odds or evens. I, I guess what I'm trying to fish in is like, you're describing the urgency in their voices, but do they appear like the other NPCs? Are they like, Ah, oh, this is annoying, but we're going to get through it, or just like sheer panic? What is going on? No, everyone on? is in okay, full panic so mode. This no, is, this is, there's this no is trusting the... face to lean towards right now. I do look there's... at the chef, because the chef seemed. Because that's, that, I, I think I was with yeah. the chef. <laughs> she, she looks concerned as much as any person who never shows emotion, for the most part, can show concern. Even their face kind of falters a little bit. But uh, I would like someone to call odds or evens for me. I could use... Odds. Oh, do it, do it, do it. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's... Okay. One of the islands passes by without issue. It's very close. And there's a moment of like, oh, it's okay. And then the other island is now on a direct course towards your rest stop island. Should we jump? We should jump to the mists, through the mists below. Should we fly? We should fly. Can any of you fly? And better yet, can you fly and carry a load? If, if, if Marty is here, could we hitch a ride again? And you convince Marty to, to get a ride because Meaty, in the midst of all this, gets knocked out. Like the island crashes and it breaks apart things. And right now, your island is like the not looking great. Question. Do I have yes. access to all the tattoo abilities, or is that something I, we gain? I believe. Uh, I believe it is. You start with those available. Okay. I will double check that after this game, but for the purposes of this and expediency, I'm going to go with yes to my knowledge. It's just because the end point of a normal series is to have, I believe, roughly like nine death marks. So you starting with like four roughly, I think you're somewhere in that range of death marks, if I recall correctly. I'm going to say yes. Point is, you have access to whatever abilities you do have right now, is what I'm saying. Okay. Um, because I have two that could possibly work here. Okay. Um, what what would you like to try and do? To convince uh, Mitty and Marty to take us out of here. So, I, have, okay. I can technically control hearts that have the heart um, death mark, or I could spend a point of will and lie to an NPC and believe me without rolling. Which tongue. which route would you like to go? Um, I think I think in this moment, considering that we have two people unconscious, we don't know where we are. Everybody is panicking, and and Ren did bring up a po good point. We can get back on the flying beast that we had started on. I think I want to control. I want to control. Marty's heart and just to be like just to to state oh we're your birdlings you need to take us and protect us you made Marty a parent they don't even have a partner yet not every parent needs a partner <laughs> I, they've never even been involved with anyone is the thing <laughs> Birds sometimes adopt eggs that are um, alone. You know what? You know what? That's fair. You know what? That's very cis-heteronormative of me to assume all of these things. <laughs> Single parent households are a thing. Adoption is a thing. Older Once siblings again, taking the... care of their younger siblings is a thing. 
Once again, I am proven wrong by the queers. <laughs> and as such, I must abide by the statement. Okay, is so you are going to do that. So that is using, is that a talent you're using? Or here, that is a, not a curious a it is your death. It is a trick. Okay. Yeah, so that I got from the death mark of having a heart. Okay, so it. what this will do is using your trick lowers the challenge by one. So this is going okay. to be a challenge of three. So for you, it'll be lowered to two. How does right, one uh, so help? That would be, I believe you also have to, uh, you spend it's the same kind of thing. points of VP, I think, yeah. or what yep, is it? Yep, you're correct, you're help. correct. There is, yes, Two there points is... of what? Is it CP or VP? I'm grabbing it. I'm grabbing it right now, hold on. No worries. It was just because I had to read redo my you can spend you can spend two points from the appropriate pool to give your ally an additional success to their check so if if you are trying to be charming and such ren i would say it would have to go from one of those pools mostly related to that which in this case would would you it comes so from body soul, mind, soul I guess. probably soul yes it would be from soul i hope you have soul i have soul i this this seems this seems dire. Two people are out. Uh, you yes. know what? Let's let's poke let's poke the bear. I'll I'll spend those two. Very okay. Sad. So and you've I'm given using... one check, and what are you using, Imena? Um, I think. Uh... Really funny. I have more points than mine, but I have more of a charm character. Which is soul, which is my worst stat. <laughs> um, You're all good. You're all good. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I guess the only either ferocity if I can use that or charm. Um, okay. Because I mean, so like you, yeah, like you would be mode. using. Uh, I yeah, I would say if you're using charm to try and convince. So this is a soul charm check mm -hmm. if you wanted to try and boost it in some capacity you would be pulling from your generosity pool and mm -hmm. you could spend okay. a point to get an additional success on the check if you wanted okay. to that is that is the whole mechanically what you would be needing to do in order to succeed on this okay or um... in order to it's giving you what the full list of options are available to you okay so just for mechanic reasons. So I have uh, one in generosity. Okay. So then so that would you go would, down to zero. And is that Yeah, that correct? would go down to zero. Uh no, your your concept your your concept pool your your concept pools are the kinds of things that they're an extra resource for you to spend. There's no like harm to you happening from using those. It's just mm -hmm. one of the big things with losing all of them when you go through the experience of a break is that that basically means you don't have an extra resource to rely on anymore. Right. Okay, so then, yeah, I will spend that generosity to roll three dice. Okay. And tell me how many? Uh, um, four, it's four and, four above, and right. above. Yes. I got one success with a six. <laughs> with a okay, dice. so that's one success. You're spending a pool from your pool for the second one, and Ren has given you the third that you needed. So you had already lowered the challenge anyways. So you do manage. Marty is currently looks very hesitant and is very worried about Meaty, who just looks like they got knocked out and are like near a table. They're they're not dead, but pretty hurt. Uh, but in that moment, like you appeal to Marty, and Marty is very much like, I am also an animal that is scared. I don't care right now. I would like to get out of here. Yeah, so I would call out to Ren, like, to grab Meaty, and then, like, all three of us to haul onto, onto Marty and be like, yes, let's go. Does, okay. Would I have the capacity to drag the, the chef as well? Do they want to come? Do I have to spend time to convince the them? I will put it this way. This chef is currently trying to take care of everyone else who's panicking and trying to get them to calm down. You get the sense that they're very level-headed person in a situation of panic. Like, they're worried, but they're like, stuff is happening. I need to respond and take control of the situation. So, right, that's up to you whether or not you would like to try and convince them to come along. 
or leave and leave behind everyone else. It is your call. Well, no, time is of the essence. And I think in this moment, all Ren is going to do is like open, give a hand extension to like, come in, yes, no. Says no. Till we meet again. Uh, yep. Grab meaty, okay. grab our unconscious peoples. Antonia, how are you responding to this? What is Antonia's reaction? I am going to get to Ophir and Quest because there's something special. No, no, no. There is something special for you two that is relevant to the situation no. as well, despite being passed out. I think she is just simply like trying to make sure that like nothing falls on Ophir and Quest while everybody else is like trying to negotiate this more like social thing. Um, I think that's most like she's going to be very focused on keeping these two safe while physically safe while people are focusing on other things like you know convincing Marty or like surveying the rest of the situation that's just what she's yeah <laughs> okay so you're basically making sure you're, you're you're keeping watch of everything happening yes I'm keeping watch on everything I'm making sure like random shit doesn't fall on people yeah no <laughs> or unconscious uh, people yeah so you're the group has you've pulled the unconscious people that you can onto the back of marty uh currently jimena is the one uh directing marty so feel free to decide because you do see in the uh, in the distance uh there is actually more coming your way there appears to be what looks like a long serpentine like water dragon creature that is just doing one of these, like doing wave motions all the way through the air and is like slinkily going through it. And then you just kind of see, let's see, which one did I say of this? Ah, yes. They're out of nowhere uh, from, from just another random, apologies for that sound. They're out of nowhere. There is another creature appearing from another island. Uh, it looks like a massive lizard-like creature with tall back spikes and eggs, uh, and legs, pardon it, eggs. Legs that end in sharp pincers. That just jumps out from that island and tries to land on the water serpent. Fantastic. I think, like, as I'm, like... I've been on horses before. Obviously, this bird isn't a horse, but... It's the closest. So I kind of like, you know, like, like pat their neck area and like, all right, go, go, go. And then call out. And it's just one of those things, like, if anybody's unfortunately able to jump on and hop on, we're, we're heading out. Like, just giving anybody a chance to know, like, we're at escaping and if they can. And obviously, if I can or, or Ren can or, um, or Antonia to, like, grab anybody that tries to reach out because... I'm not cold hearted, but we got to. Th there's yeah. unfortunately not enough time. I'm not cold hearted, but also pra pragmatist. I'm also a pragmatist, therefore I need to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Uh, you would be able to call out to some people. Folks are. There are some folks who are just getting their way out of the rest stop, like building, mm -hmm. when a chunk of another island just starts coming and just kind of crashes through. Like we're talking in terms of level of destruction here, Superman fighting the other Kryptonians from like Man of Steel movie. Like the level where you're like, I protect people as Superman, but also I have leveled three city blocks with one punch. It's, it makes sense in a way, but- Capitan, it's time to steer this vessel through the sky. Marty <laughs> takes off. Uh, yeah. Before I prod about what's going to happen there, Ophir and Quest, you find both of yourselves, both of you find yourselves kind of adrift in a space of what appears to be complete darkness. You feel so much of the strength that you had when you entered this place has left you. But it sounds like you are hearing 
very soft ethereal music is playing nearby. And also you see just one at a time, just these little almost spectral butterflies. What do each of you do? Can we see each other? Yeah, you can see each other. You definitely can. Then I think the first thing I do is just kind of ocular pat down of Ophir and just make sure that they're all in as close to in one piece as is possible. Yeah, you... Ophir, you, you feel like shit, but this is not an unfamiliar feeling to you, oddly, given the kind of life that you've lived, but you both... You're not really floating in space, but there does not appear to be anything you are physically standing on either. Cool. I think, I think my initial answer of just was in fact what Ophir is doing and just probably hasn't really processed like that there's anybody else here has like seen a butterfly pass in front of them. But it's just like, it's quiet, it's peaceful. There's nothing here. This is fine. And they're just laying there. You have your response, Quest? Ophir just seems to be kind of lost in this. How do you respond? Lost in the sauce. I'm going to walk over to Ophir and stay as much in their line of sight as possible uh, and just kneel down in front of them and as gently as I can say, hoping not to startle them, we'll say, Ophir, you okay? It's Quest. Oh. They they try to like get up a little bit, prop themselves up. Uh, didn't see you. Sorry. Is where is everybody else? I think we might be the ones who wandered off. Oh. We. We were we were looking at the mural. And then there's nothing for a little bit. And then we woke up here, arrived here. Where is here also? I don't know, but it's kind of nice. It's nice, but it feels incorrect somehow or like we haven't completed a process i guess doesn't feel like this is where we're supposed to stop yeah we could follow that pretty music and see where it takes us okay we can do that. Okay. So yeah, I think we will uh, follow the music. Okay. I'd like to give you both, uh, this is a check. Use whichever attribute and core stat you feel is appropriate. This will be a challenge of, let's say, three. But again, remember, bear in mind your talents, your approaches, and any curiosity you feel is appropriate use here because those can affect your checks as well so i'll start with uh ophir what what uh 
course stat and attribute would you like to use? Is there a talent you would like to use in order to help you, or, uh, or rather a trick, or curiosa, or is there a way you would like to use your approach to help you with this? Hmm. I think, I think I might want to uh, summon the sands of the Tenebris which is not technically sans, but uh, to use my trick to sort of alter space and time to an extent, maybe not intentionally, but to add to this scene of peace, but bring more substance to it rather than just accepting emptiness, if that makes sense. So yeah. bring bring into being maybe some flowers, some water, some, you know, trees, just nice, pleasant scenery. Okay, that is what you are attempting to do. So I said it was challenge three, correct? Yes. Okay, so with you using, that is a talent you're using or is that a trick? I believe it's a talent. Okay, so using uh, that particular talent, let me just take a look at your pool, just to be safe. Let's make this easy on all of us. There's DK, there's, there's, there, there it is. That was, and time and space. Okay. So. That was talent, you said. So with using talent, that is going to give you an additional die to roll on this for whatever attribute and core stat you are looking to use for this roll. So roll those, and you have a plus one die for using your talent. And so while you are doing those rolls, quest, what are you choosing to do? And are you using a talent, your approach, or anything else to help with the check? I am choosing to... Um... I think mind percept. Um, okay. I, I want to, yeah, I want to try and just truly follow the sound of music and play hot or cold with it. Um, and just kind of figure out where it's coming from. Um, so that is, it does for me. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the challenge three? It was three. So remember, if if you do want to try and use your approach, oh, you've already reached it. Yeah. <laughs> you need to ask. Damn it. <laughs> okay. And Ophir, did you meet the challenge? Just barely. By the, the additional die helped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. That was that was it. <laughs> so, for both of you, um, quest. You hear the music, but it it fills up the space much more serenely. And there's a moment in which it almost feels like the tune begins to change to something that you recall from past life. So I don't know quite what Quest's music tastes are. So what would be filling this space right now? You are welcome to fill in that detail. Um, I think it starts out as just kind of like vague, wordless angel music. Um, I think it eventually settles into, I think it settles into just a really smooth kind of blues guitar, just something that's playing gently in the background, something that you would play while you were sitting at home working on a rainy day, just kind of that sense of um, being enfolded in a really bassy sound. Okay. And while that is happening, you said it was Ophir flowers and things of that sort. You're just sort of shaping and filling up the space yeah. as well. Yeah, just just a peaceful like a uh, walk through a uh, more natural kind of park sort of feel. I'm not saying that just walking through the picture any paintings of Ophelia without the dead body, but that's basically what it is. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, in both, both of the sorts of wills that you have in this in-between space, you see 
there is a path being laid out, like kind of a walking path that probably someone in just a very, very nice, very simple, but very beautiful park, maybe even see faint spectral images of kids playing somewhere on like jungle gyms and stuff. You see rows of flowers lining the pathway. That's Ophir, you're, you feel your body just slowly shifting the space to create this path for both of you. And Quest, you feel the music is playing and it's growing. And you see far off in the distance, you see Jean-Paul is playing the music. Jean-Paul is through a portrait. Does he appear to be looking for us? Like, does it? Do I get the sense that he is trying to guide us back, or just, does is he just jamming while he's on his lunch break? <laughs> it's hilarious and images. It is just like, look, I preside over an internexus space with a whole bunch of rowdy people. I get a break for myself every now and then, yeah, because I get to decide. Uh, no, I would say. I would say the best way to put it is player side, yes, but quest, I leave that up to you whether they would interpret it as Jean-Paul just fucking around or Jean-Paul trying to help. I think for you as a player so that you know clearly, yes, this is that, but I think whether or not quest would, how quest responds, I leave it to you to decide what does uh, she feel towards Jean Paul does do they take Jean Paul to be someone who is trying to help them in their own specific way? That's I think the quest I does. It. I think quest views Jean Paul not so much as a lifeline, but as someone who really has no reason to lie to us. Um, we're staying as guests in his hotel, and his staff is working around the clock to make us comfortable. Um, and they've, as far as I can tell. It's exactly what it says on the tin. They've told us what the stakes are and how to change them in our favor. So I think hearing music that I find kind of inherently comforting and then looking into the distance to see that it's Jean-Paul playing it and kind of the outline of a portrait, I think I just kind of cock my head toward Ophir and point. I think, I think he's trying to help. Hmm. Okay. Well, we should at least get you out of here. And I think he's going to very tentatively sort of offer to take her hand. And by offer, I mean he he's a little spooked and wants to hold hands but is also like do you want to hold hands um she she absolutely like as gently as she can takes it but does give it kind of a double squeeze she's okay and of that well that is happening in your own subspace uh, just everyone like else <laughs> yeah everyone else just sees you two just kind of passed out but this is this is how I'm handling the catatonic stuff to still have you actively involved in the narrative is that for all intents and purposes, things can still go really badly for you outside of this, but inside you have your own journey that's happening while processing the fragments. But uh, so back to the main group, uh, you're on the back of a giant techno organic mechanical bird. Uh, you've taken off and shortly after you've taken off in the air, you do see the island that was approaching some distance away just kind of come veering into your rest stop island and just split it right down the middle. <laughs> like, I don't even know what this side means anymore, but... <laughs> it's it just anyway. a bit vega. <laughs> I mutter. <laughs> What are the three of you doing? <laughs> well, you you have three people who are knocked out in your care. Did and you manage to grab anybody or did anybody else? Folks literally tried to jump onto Marty 
as and but fell off and couldn't hold on long enough. So some folks are you do maybe kind of hear a couple of Wilhelm screams off in the distance to kind of punctuate the the absurdity and also the horrifying nature of this whole thing that's happening. Yeah. What um, are the three of you doing? Like like the eclipse is still fully taking control. You see fog is rolling over the lands below more and more. Like there is almost nothing of the land that you could once see hours max ago. But this is this is still some sort of fantasy world. I'm not saying uh we should simply cast away lives, but they're not real. I still feel pity, and I'm glad we saved who we could save, and I measure at, at Midi. But they were not real people, right? I mean, technically, I could say the same about you. I don't know if that's necessarily relevant at this moment in time. Mm. Um, oh gosh, what happened to the island that hit into our rest stop? And what happened to them? Just... Did they take like a a yerbita, some herb? What happened? No, like a, like a legit above table question. What happened to the island that it hit into our rest shop? What state is that in? Oh, that one's still floating. It's just got a bunch of other things. Like you did see the island crash into that gnarled tree, flying butterfly spewing creature thing. Uh, that one's now replaced it. You could try and land. You have no idea what's on it at the moment. That's true. But it's your call. But right now, like, the things that were fighting in the air haven't stopped fighting. This is a matter of what is the group doing in a moment of, like, this is all happening very quickly and ramping up. What are the three of you deciding? I say and we wherever, should go to if... the middle, to the land below the mists. Yeah, I think that's technically where Jimenez kind of as best as possible trying to gear the bird to like dive and like find like as much as okay. they hate to admit it solid land is probably safer land yeah <laughs> my most hated of enemies solid <laughs> land <laughs> exactly so okay that is happening are the other two of you trying to do anything else while Jimena's trying to steer you over there you're trying to look around are you trying to grab get attention of anyone that could be flying alongside you or anywhere nearby so you do see a little bit away from you it looks like there are other folks on mounts that aren't the kaiju ones that are fighting in the air what are you doing because Jimena, i'm gonna say that will come down to another check for you to decide how well this goes because marty is still freaked out despite oh, getting yeah, out no. of this so this is a matter yeah. of trying to control Marty as well. Yeah, my whole I'm relying on the other two to take care of everything else and and give me any relevant information to flying this thing. But yeah, my whole focus is getting us to land safely somewhere, not crash. Um, so yeah, so I'll figure out what role that is. I think Ren would feel most useful taking care of the unconscious people. Who knows when they'll wake up and might have relevant information. So uh, if when possible, Ren will try to have a uh, meaty quest and no fear, like hopefully dragged in a way that they're kind of lying side by side. So Ren can take like a quick look of all of them, like almost in a position so something fall, like Ren could just like jump over and protect, do a protect. Okay. Antonia, what are you doing? Um, I will keep an eye. I will try and see if like... A, if there's like anything coming toward us that looks dangerous, but I do also want to see if it seems like anybody else in our situation is going to like, is there like a pattern that they're, in the way they're moving, like, are they trying to suss out if there is a safer location that other people know about that we don't? Okay, I would sense. say I would say in that case for for both of you, for, for Ren, for trying to take care of the others and make sure that they're doing okay just make and preparing yourself. Tell me what uh, horse stat and attribute you want to use for that. But for Antonia, if you're trying to keep a lookout, 
-hmm. It would probably be, I'd lean towards either Mind Percept or Soul Understand, because I feel like Soul Understand works really well at trying to pinpoint other people's intentions and such. Let's see. Hold on. Let me let me see, let me figure this out. I don't want to just pick the better one. We're gonna we're gonna figure out which one she's actually doing here. I appreciate you for not immediately going for the best stat. <laughs> Look, I respect the power gamer mentality. However, comma sometimes you have to roll your less good stuff. I'm I gonna don't say percept because I feel like that's actually what she's she's trying to just observe okay. and see where the heck anything is. Okay, so I'm gonna put that. Given the circumstances, I'm going to put that as a, as challenge of three. Now, bear in mind, you have talents, you have potentially mm -hmm. curiosa, you have an approach you can use. Do not forget that your approaches are are also a vital way of trying to make things easier for you as far as checks go. Oh yeah, I have my little my giant sewing needle. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you figure out what you're going to use for that, Antonia. And Ren, what are you deciding to try? It's <laughs> a phase either. Overcome to is the application of physical vigor and strength. Can I use that application on determining <laughs> someone else's vigor and strength? I know. I would say that 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 I would say it's the application of physical vigor and strength. I would put that as well under the understanding of other people's vigor and strength. And if you wanted to, alternatively, you could use mind and apply to make sure that they are like not in any danger of anything else happening to them as well because i think mind apply uses background schooling so i would say that would be an understanding of like the body's well-being as well i would i would let you use either set then for your check let's go mind apply okay so let's roll for that i'm gonna say that one is just a two okay and four that and would above, be a challenge right? of two four and above is your success one success. Did you use anything uh, to try and make the check easier? None of these are really... Unless disappearing magically helps me out. Possib probably not. When I regain is... health, I regain additional point, but I, I don't think that can really wiggle that, so... Not not at this point. I don't, I, I will... I don't see relevant things here. Okay. Then I will ask you one other thing. Mm -hmm. Is this a case where Ren wants to make sure that this succeeds without a shadow of a doubt? Because you could also instead suffer a memory. It won't change the outcome drastically, but I will say narratively there will be an effect that is quite uh substantial but remember it requires you to remove a point of will to do it which would mean you would begin i believe your will is only one no I, I i misspoke last time my will is four if it if it's count oh, if it's you... tied to soul yes mm. then then it would mean you would be dropping point of will which that gets you closer and closer to stagnation because uh, you can only take a few points of stagnation before you're entirely gone, but it's every time your will pool empties out, there is a serious risk of you. I'm gonna roll as to whether I do that or not. Okay. I don't know. Uh, odd yes, even no. Odd. So, nope. Okay. Yeah, you you are checking them over. You have no idea what is going on. Pat pat. In pat pat. <laughs> pat, pat, pat yes, pat, pat. you have you have no idea what is going on. And, but in, in the moment in which you are taking care of them, both Ophir and Quest, you you feel like you hear. It's like the walls and boundaries of this in between space are having someone beat on the sides of it with a hammer. It is disruptive it is unsettling it is very sensory overload kind of borderline quest is just gonna hold ophir's hand tighter and keep walking forward 
Okay. Not change pace, not change direction, anything. Just keep moving. Antonia. So you, you succeeded. You wanted to know about the riders and all the ones around you? Um, I rolled all ones. <laughs> oh! I did the okay. opposite of that. Okay. It's fine. I don't see anything. So, <laughs> uh, so here's the thing. So... Hey. Yep, thinking this over. So... Because both of you failed that, be sure to mark an experience in a linked advancement pool. So, whereas Ren's issues have affected your companions stuck in the realm in between, uh, Antonia, you are just like, because uh, Jimena has asked you to like pay attention and like keep her informed about what's going on, right? You have the distinct experience of being like, okay. Uh, we sh we'll be fine. Those those folks look like they're gonna let us like pass by, and things will be okay. Because you see them going like like making this gesture of like it. It looks as though on the surface it's saying "come here," because you can't read with their their lips to tell what they're saying. You can't hear them, and you can't parse it very well. So he meant it. You're given a good sense of like go towards them. It's right around that moment where you realize they were not making this gesture of come hither to say, come here. They're saying, get out of the way. <laughs> it's like the other way. <laughs> As, uh, oh boy, oh boy. Interesting. Yeah, I was planning to roll maneuver. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm you gonna, might want to do that. <laughs> you might want to do that. Uh, I'm going to say it was going to be a challenge of three. It is now a challenge of four with the group's mess ups. Mm. Uh -oh. Okay. Uh, let me see. The reason, but there is a huge reason for this. Why is because now not only are you trying to dodge the various people who are trying to get the hell out of the way, uh, you get to see what was trying to come towards you. Awesome. There is a massive, like at least a bare minimum city block length sized, uh, giant bird. This one is not techno-organic, though, or mechanical. This one, its whole body, it just seemed to have appeared out of nowhere, and you get the strong sense because of the strangely colored plumage of various tinges of, like, blood red, that it has some sort of camouflaging capability that it just blended into the skyline until it saw a chance to get something. Uh -oh. And uh, you see the actual creature... Looks as though its feathers are tone are very like warm earth tones, but the top of its head has a very brain matter pink like coloration to it, and it's charging towards the group right now. This is gonna require a full maneuver. <laughs> yeah. Do. Okay. So, I technically only have three dice to use to do the four. Uh, to get um, what I want to do is use <laughs> my talent. Um, okay. And I just had it written down. So my talent, I can add a die, right? Like mechanically, that's what it does. Uh, because what I want to do is yeah. maneuvering is I'm going to push. Sorry, I'm going to mutter sorry to the bird, but I'm going to like like use all of my strength to push them downwards, and I'm going to jump up so that like if if the bird the the creature that's coming towards us going this way, the bird and all the passengers are going this way. I'm going up and using my talent that I have wings and can fly can just do a like you know hardcore parkour <laughs> over them and uh, and to use the momentum get up on the hydra's hardcore. back <laughs> Jesus I have not heard that reference in years god damn it okay. I use it all the time uh, <laughs> I love that's what you have to do in Fortnite oh, now okay you have to hardcore parkour <laughs> <laughs> so 
this gives you an additional die. <laughs> Roll that. And tell me what you get. And also, Antonia and Ren, you seeing the situation a little bit later than Jimena, but also seeing how terribly this is going to go. Would either of you like to chip in from your pools to try and spend to get a success? Because you might need it, depending on how well uh, Jimena rolls. Something uh, is coming to threaten us. I'm yes. going to need at least one person to succeed. <laughs> I got a six, a five, a five, and a two. First of all, can I... The second Antonia leaves the back of Marty, can I grab whatever, like, rain situation is going on here? I don't know if that's how... I, I don't know if that's going to help, but I just want to establish that first. <laughs> like, that you are grabbing... Is, yes. Actually, that's very important. That's actually a very valid... Yeah. I'd say that's... That if you're using your pool to do that, you're taking over for Jimena while... They do Next parkour, time. aerial parkour. Yeah. Kind of um, helpful. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do that first. I don't know if that helps toward this role, but I want that I want I want that cleared up first. Um Yes, that's um, cleared up. Someone is still in control of being responsible. Um I'm being responsible. What are you saying? You just hardcore parkour in midair! Several yes, miles up in to... the sky! To leverage our bird to quickly go downward so we can I, crash into look, another look, bird. Look, I, under, I understand that the logic makes sense and it is a noble and very ridiculous but cool idea that doesn't get away from the fact that also might be irresponsible to leave your group without someone holding the reins. I just realized. Split the second decision. This is what captains do, okay? <laughs> I have a talent in which I can manipulate a fate of an action. Would I be able to, like... Oh? Would I be able to... Would I be able to alter the amount of space that Jimena... Like, the distance that Jimena has traveled? Like... I don't know exactly how this works. <laughs> and or conversely, I have a talent to stun another with grace. Can I, can Ren's beauty and grace stun the angry verb? You, you, you know what? <laughs> Just how kind of like stop I, flapping and plump it to ground. <laughs> I'm, I'm pulling it straws. <laughs> I'll give, I'll give it. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Normally, this is one person does two from their pool in order to give the success to somebody else. Mm. If both of you are willing to spend a pool because I like the argument you've given for your talents, I will give Jimena the other success that your group needs to pass this check. Oh, God. These are coming from your concept pools. Remember that. You, these are extra resource that you feel is appropriate. Uh, if you're both willing to spend the one, you can do this. It's coming from where? What pool? It's coming from uh, your it's concept pools. Yes, it's coming from your, your concept pool. So ferocity, lucidity, and generosity. Okay. So for, so uh, And that I'd would get emptied, for example, or deducted? That, you would be spending one from there. Okay. One from so any of these three. One from any of those three. I'd say given the descriptions, lucidity, your ability to change and see things as they are. I'd say, Antonia, if you spent, if you gave up a pool from there, that makes sense given your talent designation. Uh, I would say either mind or soul. How willingly you give yourself things to others also works for Ren in that situation. So I'd say you could do that as I, well. I think generosity in that case. Yeah, so if you both spend it. So Jimena, you pull off hardcore parkour in the middle of the air. You you push Marty down more. Yeah. Wings. Um, and then, yeah, the wings that spread out, they're not angel wings, they're not normal, but they're not the typical bird wings that you would see. They are Quetzal wings Ooh. that spread out from her back as she, like, the gust of air and everything and having, yeah, the feeling that I'm being helped somehow, not under quite understanding how. And um, I think it's also, like, using the wings, I kind of hopefully semi-distract this new bird a little bit so that it doesn't, like, try to, like, you know pursue if that was its intention and then just fly over it and then hopefully 
um, fall with style back onto our bird. Because, yeah, first time wings, what the heck? I don't the, know what's going on. The bird, the bird passes through. You manage, you are still falling, but you are at a pace where, like, Given that Antonia has directly stated that she is going to grab the reins and can direct you up, and you are starting to make your way through the fog, I will say, now, moving, and Ren, you also distract said bird. Not in the way you expect. I'm going to say, it's just, you look very tasty, and suddenly, like, it's just zeroing in on you and doesn't have enough time to pay attention to everyone else. I am a snack. You were going to say that, and yet it's Quest and Ophir, you are charging through the world. The world that you're going through is you are having that experience of stuff is hitting like a hammer hitting the outsides, and then suddenly it feels like someone... It, if you, you imagine that your path was a level plane, even with the rocking happening, the moment Jimena like parkour pushes off it's like your path has a dip in it and the physics of the world just kind of alter you're still walking on a straight path but anyone looking from like a side view is like you are walking at a weird dipped in angle now but and it feels like the place around you is beginning to collapse Ophir is capital s struggling with all the, the slamming and noise and the scary shit, uh, probably just clinging real hard onto Quest's hand. Uh, occasionally, probably stops when there's a really loud banging or something, and needs a little bit of encouragement. But it's every time there is like a super particularly loud banging noise quest is just going to squeeze Ophir's hand just tight enough as a kind of hey lifeline still here and every time Ophir stops quest will stop with them and just gently okay we're almost there but we can't stay here we definitely can't stay here so just a little bit further okay and just inch by inch try and work toward where Jean Paul is okay you are you are right on the edge, just a few paces away from the portrait in your realm and sort of overlapping with that scene. Like if you're imagining this is like watching a piece of cinema, like you have a side by side, like split screen of like one of you, one is the pair of you like going through this weird physics defying place. And the group is like Jimena falling through the air Antonia trying to like gather the reins. Ren is like getting the attention and like making sure the rest of you aren't falling off. And as you are still making your way down to the fog, it's like time slows down for both sides. And you watch as, as you begin to make your way through the fog, you see there is a maw down there the maw of a massive creature that is about to bite down on Marty, on the entire group, and swallow you whole. And the moment that Quest, your hand, manages just to reach through, hold, like holding Ophir's hand, both of you manage to reach through the portrait, like all of you just Plummet like ass over tea kettle through back into the gallery of memories. Are we like, conscious now? Yeah, you're conscious now. Okay. Like you all, both of you wake up, and your three companions look like they've been through a, a much more significant harrowing hell than you have. All things considered, it's pretty bad. But you're all like it's just full on crumple of bodies just falling out rolling, in the middle a of the tuck couch. and roll. <laughs> <You know>, like... <laughs> um hello. Uh, you all look different. What happened? You're awake. We're alive. It worked. 
This were is we... the maw of the beast, then. <laughs> were we not awake? It's we're not as so wet much. as I would expect. We're in the maw of a beast. Is Jean Paul still here? <laughs> or was that is he still playing illusion? the blues guitar? <laughs> no, Jean Paul has stood up. He has the guitar in his hand, uh, and he's like the mm. epiglottis. <laughs> Go on this hotel manager. The thing playing on this guitar. <laughs> Ignoring that that whole image because that's extremely funny. But no, he's just like, oh, made it back. Good to have you back. How? I think Ophir is still just laying on the ground, staring at the ceiling, just like. I have multiple questions. Every question, all every all, all I have are questions. What was it? Was it a mushroom? First. Was it a gas? Is everyone okay? We all have our hearts still. As I like dust myself off, still disappointed. I don't have daggers. <laughs> um, and then looking at both you, Ophir, and Quest, you two passed out. What happened? We were, we were looking at the mural, and, you know, just, just kind of trying to get a sense of, I guess, the island and the kind of people that, that frequent it, and I saw something I remembered. I remembered something from, from before, from, from when I was alive. The last oh. thing I remember is remembering, actually. <laughs> That's good. That was the whole point of us going in. Quest, like, wheels on Jean-Paul and is just, is that going to happen every time? Uh, every time you remember, yes. And, and we can remember at any time, any point, any single one of us. So we could just drop like we just did anytime. Yes. That is that is the nature of the spaces that the gallery offers. Does and it's also the great danger of them. The world is going to break every time one or two of our people drop because that would have needed some planning. I would have had rotten body carriers or something. The problem is that these spaces are are carved both literally and metaphorically from the memories that our guests are trying to recover. If Some it... of you may have, may have wished for freedom, for adventure, for the ability to be out in the world in a way that would never have you enclosed in a single space ever again. That concept alone could have created that entire world. If Frank gets up and turns to look at that painting, the one we had entered, does it look different than when we came in? It is blood red all over. And the world, the world depicted in it looks as though it's going through a transition period where now there's nothing of the world below that can be seen again. There is only the floating islands that have survived. Did we cause that? And I'm asking John Paul. Yes and no. Yes, your memories may have brought you to the brink of tragedy or ruin in order to deliver in its most quiet moments what you needed to find but no and also that these worlds are not real but also very real and that the people who lived in them people who existed in them may very well have been real at one point for some of you
Well, I think um, Humana just frowns at that and then turns to look at a fear. Sorry. No, it's okay. Just checking in to make sure that yeah. DK was not getting talked over. Yeah. But yeah, he turned to look over at Ophir. How is Ophir reacting? Is Ophir reacting? Let's start with that. Still just laying flat on the ground, eyes closed, half listening, just kind of dissociating, you know? Just one of those days. But has been listening. Is just like, I don't have the energy to ask questions. I'm just laying here. The floor has become my friend. The floor is Ophir's only friend. <laughs> Ow! Jesus! Hurt! That hurt me as a person. Take but, Ben. Right, right, when it's like, like noticing that like everyone is like looking around, confused, swiveling heads. The one person not swiveling head is Ophir because their neck, I assume, is still plotted on the ground. So Ren is just like confused, notices Sophia on the ground, kind of walks over, squats, doesn't just say anything, takes off their jacket, and just kind of like places it on Ophir's back, and then just squats backwards and just kind of sits there. Uh is such a sweet notion. I think they are so startled out of their uh, just kind of, you know, dissociative state that their first reaction is eyes pop open and immediately just like push away and go for a punch towards you uh, before they realize like, oh shit. Uh, and they stop mid swing and they're just like uh sorry the floor is cold I guess John Paul speaks up for those of you who have obtained what you are looking for this experience can be extremely grueling. You may feel free to take some time to rest and recover before you decide to go forward again, should you choose to go forward again. It is your decision. The services of the hotel are available to you as you wish. Your rooms have been uh, made and attended to. You will, of course, have uh, a nice spread of drinks and such, should you require those for comfort. But if there are any questions you would like to ask me, I will do my best to answer them. But much of this is also of your own doing, whether you mean to. You meant for it to be this way or not. I, I think I'm going to... And he pushes himself off the ground and starts to just kind of hobble away, not towards the room, uh, towards probably outside to go collapse face down in the dirt in the garden. Um, but just sort of remembering that last memory recovered of being pulled into the hotel room and that argument and the sense of anger and dread and fear and not really wanting to go back to the hotel okay Wes, Antonia Yemena, Ren, do any of you have anything you would like to ask Jean-Paul I think Quest says thank you Jean-Paul and is going to follow Ophir out and sit a comfortable distance away. So not not right on them, but maybe five, six feet away and just start pulling items out of my backpack, uh, my approach, until I find what I now know has to be in there, which is uh, my field journal. Big, big leather bound book, bunch of stuff stuffed in it, paper clips, super thick, barely closes. 
uh, and I'm just going to open it and start making notes on what I learned effectively in the field and just not leave Ophir completely on their own. That's so sweet. Yeah, you are you are undisturbed uh, for the entire time, unless anyone from the else from the group chooses to join you outside. You are undisturbed, aside from uh, there appears to be one other individual, the uh, the man that you saw, uh, who had been with the the tall uh, the tall uh, learned woman with the purple dress and the somewhat slovenly individual. Um, the third is. Uh, very, very beautiful, very beautiful man, like silvery kind of blondish hair. Uh, wearing, it has a coat on and such, but uh, does not appear to have like a shirt or anything on, is just like bare chested and just wearing a coat and outside and seems to be just sitting in a spot, just sort of gathering his own thoughts. But he does not appear to... Uh, take up any of the space around you at all. You simply just someone else in the garden tending to their thoughts as well. Um, while that is happening, Ren, Antonia, Jimena, do you have anything else you'd like to ask of Jean-Paul? Or do you continue on with something else instead? You're talking, I cannot hear you. No, no. Yes. Thank you. Um, Carente, manager. So, you happen to be here because this is a place for you to sit and relax because you were watching over us with a particular painting? Part of my role in facilitating the acquiring of your memories is should you not have an easy means to come back through the means by which you entered to provide you a way out but it will require effort on your part particularly those who have already been through the ordeal of trying to remember to make their path back for all of you so it was it is... quest and ophir who released us from that world yes it was it was their efforts to make use of their own abilities, their own talents here in the space that provided escape for all of you. So if we are in a situation where none of us are able to reach out and we were to be hypothetically flying into the maw of a beast, our story would end within that world. Potentially. Not, not all places that you go to will be as physically dangerous. Some of them will, in fact, be more tempting for other reasons. Hmm. Uh, Ren turns to the other two that are remaining. Then I'm glad we have decided to go together as a group. Yes, it was probably the best. Antonio's and like, I have I've been outside. That already was a <laughs> lot. Now I'm outside and there's birds attacking me and there's kaiju it's fighting. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, I think at the moment Jimena's not happy with Jean Paul. So they just kind of turn. Actually, yeah. Uh, considering everything that went on, like they look at you, Antonia, and say, "Are you going to be okay?" In time, there there aren't any other options, really. Well, we need to talk about what happened. I'll be around. Uh, they give you a nod, Ren, and they just give, they don't even look at you, Jean-Paul. <laughs> they just turn around and leave to head to the, 
to back to their room. Jean, Jean Paul's non canon reactions. What did I do? I literally gave you all a way out. In great <laughs> canon reaction. I'm just, just doing my job. In great yeah, literally I'm not giving I'm us doing... all the information. That's their job. Literally could not know whether or not it would one be applicable or two if it was actually going to be even remotely relevant. My head canon literally is that there's know. a package of popcorn that's that that they just kind of kicked with their foot behind their chair. It's it's at most a toss up as far as information goes from a from a above table perspective, as far as how the world works to make it clear like stakes and such. It's also a thing where Sean Paul, you get the sense, doesn't really know everything about this place. Is like also remember he's staff. He has yeah. a role he has to serve. But in the narrative, Jean Paul is just sort of like like is very accepting of that response because he seems to very much understand yeah that's a valid response yeah especially when john paul's like i'm the caretaker of this place and just like the whole yeah even a pirate is very emotional okay i thrive off of two things one of those i can't do right now and the other one is be emotional <laughs> but so Jimena. Mark is off. Ren, are you just sticking around with Antonia? Uh, I'll... I think Ren always prefers to have company around. So if, if, if Jimena looks like she's stomping away with purpose, kind of looks at Antonia. Cafe? It's not really anything obvious else to do, so... And they see though a tea, then. Sure, sure. And uh, I, I, Ren would offer to lead them to whatever communal sitting area for for uh, for a drink. Yeah, you you are able to do that. There there appears to be uh, the only other uh, guest at this moment. Uh, appears to be well, actually, there's two guests. Uh, one looks. I'm gonna give you three word description for them, and I feel like I don't need to give anything else. Chain smoking lesbian. That's about it. Just imagine what vibe you want from that. Don't why he's always with the hair twirling. Or <laughs> I just sort of got every time. The other one. Uh super like strong look as far as makeup goes think very big Susie and the banshees kind of goth look to them very uh, kind of masculine presence but just looks like someone was like i'm gonna go to the 80s uh <sighs> i'm gonna go to the 80s and uh, i'm just gonna look at the goth scene happening there and say like, yeah i'm gonna take all that that's mine now and then just come back here but you just see those two guests who are there and they're unless you strike up conversation with them they're just seemingly like just having their own little tea by the side i mean if in order so that there's not much silence i think ren in that case is just kind of inanely talking about like the way marty flew majestically the way the, the many rows of teeth that were in the mod creature kind of kind of almost the way someone uh goes back over the highlights after watching a movie yeah i tell you she's sitting there with you she's like not really listening because she was there <laughs> it's like she doesn't need this recounted <laughs> but still it's very like uh-huh yeah, every time it, there's any natural pause, like, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> as polite as possible. And the Capitan was so brave, and you were astute with your perceptive, perceptiveness, I think. Yes, we shall say it was so. <laughs> For the record, I rolled five die, and they were all ones. I know. All of them. All of them. Red doesn't know different. <laughs> 
I, I, I also, I also just like the idea that given the arrangement you two have with each other, just like how Ren is talking and, and Antonia is just like passively just like nodding along with this. It's that you have the, de you have the gay definition of like a married couple with perfect tolerance for one another happening in that exact moment. <laughs> She's like, yeah, yes, dear. Yes, that was an exciting. I don't need to go over the movie again, but it's okay. I know you liked it. It's it's okay. I think she's like half falling. She's very tired. She's not, this is like most excitement she's had in like half her life. She's tired. Yeah. Probably, falling asleep, nodding. Yeah. <laughs> Partway through Ren, you're through maybe even another recount of some of the other moments, and then you just look over and Antonia's asleep. I left my jacket with Ophir. Leave. Ren unbuttons their blouse, puts it over Antonia, and in she, an she undershirt, and too. in an undershirt, goes and refills their, their coffee. Goes get some pastries. Listen, we don't judge so how little or how them. much you... <laughs> One more person there to are... be asleep or, or passed out. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. I think that's a very good spot to take a break really? on. Of just oh, re okay. <laughs> unless you would like... Unless you, would you like to have a conversation with the two... With with, with the chain-smoking lesbian? I'm not opposed to you having a conversation. Maybe her. the lack of clothes is the invitation. But let's discuss that after break. Just <laughs> cut right to chase. What's so funny? Nothing. Okay. I, I love my player so much. I am very blessed. But yes, uh, we are at about at the halfway point is the actual m real reason why I'm leaning towards the break. It is we're at about the halfway point, everybody. So please uh, come back in about 10 minutes. We are going to take a break, take your meds, get water, go walk around and just freshen up a little bit. And we'll see you all in about 10 minutes. <laughs>
Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the second half of our third session here on Girls Run These Worlds for Afterlife Hotel Nexus. We are currently in session three, as I said before, called Front Row Seats. Uh, our party, I think, has come to understand what exactly that's meant, considering that they just dealt with uh, going through basically a mini apocalypse of a world of floating islands that resulted in, you know, a kaiju or two or six fighting with them, fighting with each other, trying to eat them, uh, trying to uh, devour the tasty snack that is Ren and all of that. And uh, our group has managed to get back, though all in different ways, kind of processing the events of the previous excursion. Uh, last we left off, uh, Ren, full advertisement in terms of garb towards the chain-smoking lesbian lesbian and the other individual with the Susie and the Banshees style gothic makeup. Would you like to do anything, dear? Let me put it to you that way. You are muted, dear. You're muted. <laughs> are you doing this on purpose? No. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna <laughs> I was like, you're just gonna. No, no, no. It's like I know that I made a mistake. I'm gonna run with this bit until it continues. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you for letting me know. Um, Ren is uh, refilling their coffee, and it's almost like syrupy, kind of thick, and only thin that with just a bit of milk as well, and just kind of like. Looks at the other guests, smiles, tips it over, just kind of like saunters over, takes a sip of their coffee. Good. Hello. Hello there. The uh, chain smoking lesbian is the one who responds to you. My name is Ren, and I am a rather new guest at this hotel. And my goodness, I have had quite a day. Um, are you also guests here? Uh, the chain smoking lesbian just does another like long drag. Yes, I am. Uh, I'm just talking to my friend Alana here. She's been having a bit of a time. Elana, I, I, I am so sorry to, to hear that. Um, would you like to uh, have a seat? Drink some coffee together? Or whatever uh, beverage you prefer to imbibe? Sure. My name is Inez. Inez, excuse me. And uh, Ren will go and uh, pull out seats for both of them and sit down themselves. Alana, Alana, in contrast to Inez's rather stoic, firm, I am, I'm sulking lesbian uh, in a lesbian fashion. Uh, Alana just kind of has this look of like. Ah, uh, cheese, ah, uh, cheese, ah, uh, cheese. It's stressed out kind of look. The makeup is kind of running a little bit. You get the sense that she's been crying probably a little bit. And recently. So she's just sort of sitting over there. She has like a cup that if you were to get close, you would smell. It's really strong alcohol, but she's just sipping it like it's just like nothing. And then, but Inez just has like... It looks as though she's just pulling out a, a flask every now and then and taking a draw out of it, but is doing that in between drags of from her cigarette. 
My goodness, um, Inez, did you happen to go hmm. through the maw of a beast? In a manner of speaking. I see, I see. I'm sure it was a, a, a mighty beast in all, in all its manners and um, well, good on you for coming back here, making it back here. That, that, that demonstrates uh, resolve and fortitude. Indeed, yes, this, these, these are laudable things. Good, very good on you. I think she's more worn out by the experience than I am. You have embarked on this experience together, then? In a manner of speaking. I enjoyed myself, and I think given her reaction, she enjoyed herself. She's, uh, was she saying this? She's not referring to Alana. She seems to be referring to whoever she was talking about in regards to dealing with the jaw, the maw of a beast. I see. Most interesting. Are there more to your coterie? Or the two of you are the ones who tackle the experiences together? You seem very sweet, so let me just make sure I'm following you. Do you mean experiences here at the hotel or through the gallery? Uh, Ren will uh, push their coffee cup a little closer to where the flask is and kind of gesture with their eyes like, kind of like, may I? Can you? Or is it better from the flask in? Cheers. Some real strong stuff. Like we're talking, like we're at like moonshine hooch levels of of stuff. Ren will very clearly make a face that they tried not to make, but continues on as if the face meant nothing or it wasn't there or it was inconsequential. But the face exists. Like, well. Since you brought it up, I am curious if those pertain to the gallery. No, I've never, I've never really been interested in going in there. Ah. It is, I, I have heard so quite some stories that it can be very difficult to the gallery indeed. But that is not to say that the experiences you had within the hotel are any less challenging looking at Ines. I enjoy myself when I can. It's very difficult to find people I'm interested to spend time with. Most people are not content with being silent and feel like they always need company. Otherwise, it'll break them. There is also a sort of solidarity and togetherness whether or not there is music and the sound of voices in the background. There are many ways one can be together. I, for one, am very glad we are together in this hotel. All of us. You are very... You are very sweet, and you are also very attractive. I thought you should know that. Why, why thank you very much. That is very kind of you to say. You are... Also, people of, uh, well, there's a reason why I have asked you to sit with me among, among many other uh, merry-making I wish to experience here as well. Are you looking for conversation or for a ride? Are they exclusive? No, I just like to know. I just like to set my expectations. And I also don't want to leave Alana here for too long. She's... She has difficulties being alone. Well, we can make our chit-chat to help it, to help uh, your friend Ilana as well. I... I, I, I appreciate it. It's... I... I... 
I don't entirely remember why I'm here. If I'm being honest, I just have sense I was supposed to help somebody. And right as we got close to helping her, I lost faith and then it all went to shit. And I don't remember who it was and I don't know why my heart hurts so much. Like I just had my heart break in a thousand pieces every time I remember it. But it's a lot and it's it's a little hard to, to handle and being around people when you have that constantly on your mind. I I'm I'm so sorry to hear that. I if it offers any small comfort, I I wish for that pain in your heart to start a slow process of healing through understanding that it is deserving of comfort, it is deserving of love and compassion. There are many there are, and and this this energy is transformative as well. Many many a great ballad, song, dances have been written in this in this spirit. It may hurt now, but it will be something that perhaps will make you stronger later. Oh, I I I know many songs have been written about it. I I used to I think write about them as well. I don't actually know for certain. I think I was a musician at one point. I wrote many a song. I think about this person I was supposed to help. I don't know why, but all I can think is it did not go so well. Um, but thank you. Thank you. Um, if you, if you and Inez would like to go and have fun on your own, I'm more than, I'm more than willing to back away. Like, Inez obviously would like to have sex with you or what have you. Like, I, she's been eyeing you for quite a little bit of time. And, uh, you know, you're welcome to go take care of that. I really don't mind. I can manage on my own for a bit. And Inez is just sort of... I'll, t I'll make a note of this. Inez has been just looking dead eye at you. Like, just, just a look of looking... Looking at you, like, constantly with... Uh, an expression on her face I would best describe as one word. Hungry. I mean, the more the merrier. I look to confirm with the hungry person. Not even a name anymore, just the hungry person. <laughs> uh, to uh, Ilana, was it right? It, Ilana uh, in and Inez. Yeah. Inez is being the the one currently eyeing you up, and Ilana being the Inez, much more yeah, there nervous. We go. Yes, yes. Inez. It's a much a much longer take of the cigarette. Drag out of the cigarette. Sure. Well then, is there room service we can order? I'll have things delivered for us. Very kind of you. Now, I have been on quite an adventure and there is quite an energy left in me that I think this is a kind and generous way to um, to expand it. Yes, yes. Get it, Run. Get it. So that occurs in whatever time yeah. you would like that to happen. Sure. Uh, as, as we're leaving, I'll just ensure that Antonia is at least comfortable looking <laughs> because I, I did leave her with uh my blouse on top of on, on, on her back shawl oh, over the shawl and everything in front of the table she might have knocked something over oh in that case the I would have pointed is... someone to like help, help help her it's tea all over the floor <laughs> so let, let's see who's yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucia, the the head of uh, taking care of the rooms and such, 
does does go and make sure of that and and Inez uh like you do overhear Inez saying yes the usual also um I feel as though we will need a little bit more of the other materials this one looks over at Ren I feel like this one will be a lot and then just sort of <laughs> You have no idea what any of that is a reference to, though I will say above table, it's just safe for sex supplies. It's just like condoms, bottles, lube, other things of that sort. Just very prepared that even if there is no yeah. risk for, say, a pregnancy, it's just like, we're going to be prepared for it, whatever may occur. Extra you know? Red Bulls, extra Gatorades. Water, people. Water. Also. Water. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's very much Ren. Ren has their evening <laughs> with their own activities. Uh, Antonia, you you are not interrupted by anyone unless you would like to get back to your room at a later point in time. <laughs> it's, it's your call, bud. No, I think she's gonna take a nap here on the on the tea table. <laughs> it's like. Hi there, I'm just Antonia. A delicate constitution. Delicate constitution slash. I just saw four kaiju's rip each other to shreds, and another one try and eat me. While a bigger thing tried to eat me. I think that calls for a nap. That that warrants a day nap, night nap. Unsure. It warrants a nap, is what I'm saying. But moving back to, I'm going to say Jimena, and then afterwards to Ophir and Quest. Jimena, you stomped off. What are you up to in this moment? Um, he might have went back to the room. Um, kind of like their section of the room. They've kind of like just like we're tossing things around for a moment. F felt frustrated. Looked over to like the side that Ophir like sleeps on and everything. And even though I'm sure um, uh, Lucio had come through and cleaned everything, still went over. Just kind of like gave like a hard pat to a fierce pillow. And then um, get to make sure like there's drinks for Ophir whenever Ophir gets back. Um, and yeah, because they again, they're kind of treating Ophir like a stray, like, okay, don't push it. Let them like, you know, in their own time and everything. And um, probably um, leaves it like leaves a note for a fear saying if you need me um, feel free to come find me if i'm not back um and then they kind of like they have to, kind of like ren they have too much energy <laughs> they were, they were, you know and they're just like frustrated and so like after they do that they just like leave and just kind of wander um even though yeah they're not much of like like muscly person they are like you know they do they can't get around a ship really well you know easily and so mm -hmm. i think they're like in search of like a gym or something to like like there, beat a punching a like the equivalent of beating a punching bag. i don't even know if punching bags were around in the 1800s but <laughs> probably like say, you know padded dummies <laughs> interdimensional nexus point i think we can manage a punching bag if that yeah. is what you want but i will say there is one spot that Jimena would be able to explore the party had not seen uh, as of yet. There is the equivalent of I would say an Olympic sized indoor swimming pool here. Just one of the wings just opens into a huge pool. There are like pillars on each side of it a bit of ways where people of various stands are. It looks as though aspects of the pool themselves have been built to be easier to like slide into so that like for folks who have varying levels of ability and such, it's more, it, they don't have to like do a step to walk down or just like fall into it. They can just slide themselves more easily. And it looks as though depending on, because there are various guests who are currently making use of the pool, even at this hour, there are people who 
depending on how they seem to interact with the pool, it becomes deeper or shallower for their section as they move through the water. So there's never really a risk of fully drowning, but there's always a means for the pool to adjust and create a space as they need it to be. And you would see that there is a one, uh, there is one woman uh, who seems to be like watching over everyone. Uh, hold on, let me pull up. And two seconds. Seems to uh, roughly thirties, kind of pulled back, curlyish sort of hair, but uh, but you'd only be able to barely tell it because it's being hidden by like a swimmer's cap and there's some goggles. Looks to be around like her 30s, uh, black skin, very sweet kind of warm face and definitely has like a full swimmer's build, like very, very ripped like arm muscles and what have you. Just, just the full swimmer athlete's build, but seemingly is like working with some folk for like things like hydrotherapy as well of folks who are trying to Again, this is a place that's seemingly like the dining hall area, like the sound wing. It is a place to recover memories as well, or at least pieces of memory. Yeah, I think they discover the pool and everything, and they're like, um, for a moment, they're like, no, I need something more intense. Like, you know, I need to like get this energy out. And so like, they're kind of walking away from the pool, but then the water, of course, attracts them. <laughs> and they're like, I've been on land for too long. I was in the air for too long. This is, so she kind of just turns and um, just undresses to just her uh, her undergarments, um, which back then wouldn't have been bra. It would just been like a slightly loose fitting like tee and uh, uh, a kameez kind of thing and like a bloomer sort of thing. Um, and just dives in. Just dives in and kind of like sinks to like the supposed like bottom of it and just like, and she can hold her breath for a very long time. So she's just there um, like kind of like um making herself so that she stays sunk like like coming into a ball and like concentrating so that she can be underwater um and somehow that's what instead of her being like fighty or active like she's letting the water eke out the negative and like a lot of a majority of her energy i think like just like uh, like pool water tastes a little weird because <laughs> it's chlorinated um uh, but yeah, before she slowly, like, you know, floats back upwards, because eventually she does have to breathe. Well, that's good to see you came up at last. I was worried I was uh, going to have to go in and get you. And you see the the Black woman swimmer who's watching over the pool. And I think she looks up and uh, gives, like, a small smile. Um I wouldn't have minded the rescue, but thank you. Well, listen, your form's not half bad if you're if you want me to work on it with you. <laughs> uh, maybe it's just it's really nice to be back in the water. I know what you mean. I, I I'm around it all the time, and yet. When I finally have a little bit of space to actually just get to enjoy it, not watching over too many people, it's relaxing. There's a lot of folks think like when you're trying to recall stuff that it's about, you know, find that right song, get all the setting and everything right. Some Sometimes remembering is just about like remembering what your body could or couldn't do. Sometimes it's just about figuring out what felt like home again and letting that mm -hmm. guide you back to things this this definitely feels more like home than anything else i've seen so far good sometimes maybe i was a siren in another 
Well, your voice is definitely lovely. It's good to have you. It's good to have someone so enthusiastic to be in the water. Normally, I have to kind of convince folks to get involved with this place. I'm surprised it's not full of people. Eh, I, I think you know how well. But it's calm. Wealthier folks. It's can not be. like it's rolling waves, which I'm more used to. But this is nice not to have to worry about getting above the tides. Do a sailor or some kind? I've been rude. Captain Jimena, pleasure to meet you. Aaliyah, it's a pleasure to see you. So can, not that I'm really looking right now, but can we do memories outside the gallery? I thought everything was Jean-Paul's way and gallery and structure and going in and being stupid. Well, Jean-Paul, Jean-Paul liked to treat it like this. The hotel itself is more of a, a stopgap. It's kind of like a Band-Aid for, for a bad cut. It doesn't get rid of what actually hurt you. It just kind of covers up and makes sure it doesn't necessarily start getting worse. But even here, eventually, stuff starts hurting and getting worse if you're not looking. And these kind of places, the way that the hotel's been set up, you can only get a, a little piece of a memory back. You can't get a full one back unless you go out into that gallery, which, for as terrifying as a lot of those places can be, it is the best way to find what you want. Because here, I don't like I said, mind being scared being terrified, being put in danger. I mind when I have people under me. And they're being put in danger and being scared. That's Not like you're worried about letting other people down more than anything else. Well, yes, I am a captain. I have people to take care of. And I promised them I would take care of them. And then they just collapse. And then there's monsters, great, fantastic monsters just roaring into us. And I'm trying to keep the bird boat afloat or dive. And I think it like, gets a little fuzzy in their head, <laughs> you know, like having that adrenaline crash. You know, I promise something that I don't like lying to people who depend on me. You're not lying to anybody. You're just doing what you could. Even And honestly, even if he had given you any number of more details, do you really think you'd have believed him? Or really understood the scope of how things could be? Even he's not able to imagine everything people come up with, because they aren't his memories. They're yours. I'm really sure I don't remember fighting a big thunderbird. Well, but, if you, and they kind of like if, sink down in the water a little bit, <laughs> like like you know, like, like getting lost in the thought, <laughs> just yeah. like going go down. Hey, 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 hey. No, no, no. <laughs> you, you still got to float. You still got to float. We all float here eventually, but you don't want to float in that way. Suddenly, there's a clown in the background. <laughs> I was wondering if you're gonna take the bait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, the red balloon pops up over Jimena's head for no reason. Exactly. Just there. I know, I know, but and you're right. I just wasn't expect two people to go down so quickly. Even though that's people. the point. But people find what they're looking for. Sometimes without even meaning to. For your friends, I mean, that's pretty lucky. You didn't have to stay too long. Yeah, and risk getting stuck there. I 
And I think they kind of just like they float backwards, like, and they try to make sure that they stay within distance of you because you know how if you float in the pool, you can just drift away. Um, but <laughs> and they just kind of sigh and like, oh, I'm glad I found this place. You're welcome to come back here however much you want. Sorry, your camera went from like backwards to suddenly popping forwards. <laughs> um, oh, might be a bit of. She's just saying you you're welcome to come in here as often as you'd like. Lord, why is it always Wi-Fi? Why must you tempt me with? Good Wi-Fi and then terrible Wi-Fi. Yeah, unfortunately, you're breaking up a lot. Hold on. Am I back? Yes. At this moment, Hello? it's Am a I little back? Clear. I need an end. Yeah, I think so now. Okay. Except now I, I think i i think we're okay i think it was a the love of christ why technology must you always look me directly in the how about we take a hop and say fuck you in particular <laughs> this always happens All right, and we'll be right back.
Hello there, everybody. Apologies for that small little uh, text snafu. I am in a very different place now, so uh, visiting uh, a loved one. So uh, on occasion, technology likes to uh, say F you to me, but we are all good. It happens. Um, so picking up where we were before that little snafu happened, essentially, uh, Aaliyah will just just let you know, Jimena, that like, again, reassurance, you didn't lie to people, and I don't think you let folks down. There's factors that you can't control about a situation, no matter how cunning, brave, or much of a captain you are. And yeah, and he meant a nods and um, just kind of just lets, you know, the soft wave of like other people's movements in the pool kind of like, you know, have them float and <sighs> you're right. And it's good to know I can come here anytime I need. The pools of proprioception are available to you anytime you would like. Like I said, and of course, I'm Avalia. I'm here should you ever need me. Yeah, I think like they can't help themselves a little bit and they're like, so that means <laughs> I see you all the um, So that means you're here anytime I'd like. Sure. Do you ever just... need a break from helping others? So sometimes. Uh, mostly swim mm -hmm. and keep myself focused. Keep my pretty hardy stamina going, make sure I'm still staying in shape for myself, you know, kind of things you worry about when they've been a lot of your focus for your life. Mm. Yes, I have a feeling I always needed to be kind of on the run. <laughs> well, if you were a sailor of some kind, I imagine you were either the reputable kind or the not reputable kind and you don't strike me as the reputable well it's much more fun when people don't know what to expect from you as you were a captain and you just see her like look off and see that someone is struggling out in the water and she just dives in. Form is perfect. Technique and swimming is perfection. Everything about her suggests someone who has been doing this for pretty much all of her life. The sea is with her, though in a very different way than you, I imagine. She admires respectfully the form and everything and watching her go <laughs> yeah. Um and is very much like definitely will need to come back. Um, but kind of just allows them to float in the opposite direction and probably will lose some time there before they remember to go check on a fear or anybody or see if anybody's looking for them kind of thing. Or probably also until their stomach growls. <laughs> also a valid point. But Speaking of which, Quest and Ophir, what are you still up to? Are you still in the garden? Are you still just sort of taking in? Uh, let's say, let's start with Quest. Uh, Quest has been trying her level best not to infringe too much on Ophir's face, but just not let them kind of get washed out to sea by whatever they remembered. Um, there's, a, there's a line from a, a play that she read when she was in high school that just kind of keeps circling in her head every time she seems to glance over at Ophir. So I think at some point she does get up and kind of peruse the garden and see if there are a select handful of herbs and flowers that she can find. Uh, she has chamomile back in her room and probably buried in the bottom of her, her rucksack somewhere. Um, I think she quietly just kind of sits down and blends everything together. Um, and eventually kind of just 
gently tosses a little um like a like a cloth bag like cheesecloth bag full of um like rue and violet and columbine and chamomile and says um of here Ophir, I think, has finally, like, at this point, rolled over and has gotten some kind of paper and whatever materials available out and just has been, has started working on something and kind of got, like, the base done. It's just black and blue, but the, the brush is just hovering over it, dripping, and it looks like it's been there a while. Uh, so he blinks and looks over. Uh, quest. She sort of inclines her head gently toward the, the sort of roughly hewn little package that she's tossed at Ophir and said, sorry, I didn't want to, um, you know, break into your bubble or anything. Um, it's, it's tea. Uh, it, I, I thought maybe it would help. A little. Thank you. Uh, hey. What What would you like for it? Nothing. I mean, ideally, a good night's sleep for you. I don't know what you remembered, but I know I feel like a truck hit me. So, I don't know. I just, if you feel anything like that, then it just seems, it seems right that you should have some small comfort. That's really nice. I mean, you helped me get out of there. So it's the least I can do. I think I think you did all of the work there. Thank you for that. Are you okay, I, by the way? Yeah, I think I'm tired and Uh, there's this weird kind of sense that now that I know some of what I forgot, it's there's this itch to find out the rest of it. I, I don't know. I, I woke up and it was like things made more sense. I know. I know what I did. I know. I think the best thing I ever did. I mean. I'm sure they won't all be quite so pleasant, but I don't know. It's better than being just some shadow in this hotel. I'm glad it was nice. I don't want to cry, Do so I won't. But I'm starting to get the impression that memory here is a terrible burden sometimes. I guess it's all your choice and all, but I guess I hope that if you do keep looking for pieces of you, you, you find ones that don't make you look so sad. Thank you. Hey. I do appreciate that. I wish there were people as nice as everybody here uh, back when I was alive. I think that would have made a huge difference. I wish there had been too. I mean, I try not to peek, but we've all seen you drawing and you're awfully good. I'm, I'm not any virtuoso myself and she does kind of 
flip open her field journal where she's been sketching and sketching ink um just sort of periodically since she sat down and it's just the, the herbs and flowers that are in the garden um mm -hmm. he immediately really... sits up and looks over you immediately got his interest you uh, clearly have a lot more training than i do but i think i used to do it to keep myself busy but also I think I went a long time without seeing anything particularly beautiful or interesting or special. There's this sense that like everything that I saw or that I see, I want to keep somehow. I don't know. I can't quite put my finger on it. I think I understand. These are really good just because you don't have training doesn't mean there's not substance to it I mean you clearly put a lot of detail here you really were trying to get the the heart of it and that is a lot in art I think I think I'm more of an impressionist than anything else as long as I get the colors bright enough and the shapes close enough I'm usually pretty happy he smiles a bit. Yeah. Are you, this seems like a stupid, a silly question. Um, are you all right? Are you going to be all right? I don't know. Hey, last thing I remembered was it wasn't catastrophic, but I feel like it was getting there. I just have this feeling of dread that if I find out any more, it's going to be bad. But I do also remember that there is somebody I love. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we, maybe we don't have enough information to know yet. Whether it's stuff we remember or stuff we just find out. Maybe we're not supposed to know yet. And that seems like a cop out, but It feels very holy grail almost. You you get what you put into it and it might not I think what Jean Paul isn't recognizing is that it it might not be worth it for everyone. And that's perfectly valid. I appreciate that. When you mentioned earlier just becoming a shadow in this hotel i was thinking about how that might not be bad except i, I don't know how i feel about being in a hotel i don't know i feel like something happened just makes me uncomfortable but well it's nice out here it is. It's beautiful. There's, I I don't think I've ever seen as many flowers in my life. You know. Yeah, I've only really seen them in paintings. The city didn't have much, I don't think. He just shrugs. Well. I mean, now you've you got your pick of them. It's nice. Okay. Um, who says you have to decide anything now? Hotel's not going anywhere. I doubt we're going anywhere immediately. Do you? Maybe you want to share that tea? I would love that. 
I think that sounds very nice. I think I'll just let this dry. It's just a mess of just with a bunch of drips all over it. Sure. I I mean, I have no plans other than probably sleeping. I, saying sleeping like the dead, again, seems kind of silly. Um, I plan to take a nap at some point, I guess is what I'm saying. I was thinking of just sleeping in the dirt here, but I don't know. That, that feeling that you mentioned of wanting to know more. I, I don't know if I have that same feeling, but there's something pulling me and I keep, I keep, and he kind of just gestures at the art and is like, there's something trying to get out. I just don't know, but I think it's stuck, so I'm ready to have some tea and pass out. I think that sounds like a great idea. Maybe we'll catch some of the others on the way up. Maybe we won't, but get something warm in us and just stop for a little while, I think. Sounds nice. And if you do thank decide you. that you're welcome, and thank, thank you. Um, if you do decide that you want to, you want to explore more, at least you're not by yourself. You got the rest of us. I mean, we were unconscious and they got us to safety. That is true. I feel um, like, you... go ahead. Yeah, I, I think it's about this moment where you do see the the very tall, handsome uh, man with the silver blonde hair uh, does come over. Says, um, I'm sorry, I, I, I couldn't help but overhear some of what you were saying. Do you, if, if you require some assistance with getting back to your rooms, I would be happy to carry you if you'd like me to do that. Specifically talking to Ophir. Ophir immediately defenses right back up is just like, mm, that's, that's okay. I can. It is simply an offer. I, you both seem like there's been through quite a lot and seems good to try and lessen other people's burdens. And it's it's awfully appreciated, but we dragged each other this far. I think we can make it back to our rooms. Thank you, though. And I think I Quest has started to edge her body in front of Ophir's. You just see the very tall, handsome individual transform into a wolf and run across the grounds of the hotel, seemingly just giving you space. You're just grasping the ground, watching this, like. Inside, tea, away from whatever, whatever's happening over there, maybe. <laughs> tea. I don't think I want to go back to my room, but tea sounds nice. Well, uh, if I remember correctly, I did leave my favorite TV show just playing. I don't think electricity really matters here. So it should be nice and warm in there. We'll get some tea going and leave the door open and see if the others show up. So okay. folks return to their rooms, or I suppose in Ren's case, not their rooms <laughs> in due time. It is period of time passes, we'll say the equivalent of like about eight, roughly eight hours. So should you desire to sleep, uh, you are able to sleep like the near dead. The proper phrasing is it sleep like the near dead for, for future reference. <laughs> but 
Uh, I want to pull back over to Antonia. How do you react to just sort of waking up and being like, why do I have a blouse on me? Why am I in the middle of a like, community tea room? What is happening on your end? I think she's just, I mean, there's not, I feel like she's not really a cause for a lot of concern or alarm here because she's, um, unlike some of the others she's taken, everybody's word here on faith. Uh, so I don't think she's especially alarmed with waking up at the table still just, like, it's fine, everything's fine, I guess. Um, I think she's going to... I think she recognizes that this is red blouse, which is kind of confusing. Um, like, what is she walking around in? Um, but I think she's just going to fold it. Not really be sure where Ren is staying, actually. <laughs> just take that to her. <laughs> like, I don't think she knew where Ren's room was in the first place. I mean, you're not, you you know roughly where each other's rooms are. You're not, like, far away from each other in terms of but room arrangement. But does she remember that? No. Uh, well, uh, and more specifically, does she remember that right now after just yeah. waking up? Yeah, she sure? No, it's just like, okay, gonna fold it. Gonna take this back to her room. <laughs> That's, that, that was an image. <laughs> Um. Yeah, she's gonna. She's just gonna slowly shuffle with Ren's blouse over her. I think she's also gonna like try and get it like cleaned up. I think there's like tea on it. She's not really sure. That sort of thing. <laughs> she's tired, y'all. <laughs> You're able to rest. You. You awaken. And there, there is a sense like almost no time at all has passed for all of you, but you, for those of you who've gone through your breaks, it still feels fresh on all of your minds. And you do see that Jean-Paul does make a round again, just checking in on all the rooms. Curiously does not go, uh, does not knock because I'm trying to remember who Ren was sharing rooms with. Is it? I think Ren had their own room, but was a frequent visitor to uh, quests. So, yeah. Uh, I think... Uh, going to backtrack on that a little bit. I think Jean-Paul makes the rounds to whoever did end up back in their room does not just has an unerring sense of accuracy as to where people are and like does go to check in Antonia wonders where uh quest and Ophir are and goes to find them and also goes in whether or not he meant it I'm not sure whether they ended up back at their room or not I think for Ophir uh he avoided going back as long as possible. And then when he was just like, I'm literally falling asleep at the table, went back to the room, paced outside for a while, sat outside the door, and then fell asleep there. A poor, sad, sleepy boy. I don't think John he meant it. Text to the outside. Like, doesn't open the door, like, so unfortunately would not notice, but he's fine. Had noticed he's that worse places. Ophir had, um, sorry if you can hear that one second. Shit, I can't do anything about it. I apologize for the background noise. Um, took the note off the pillow and just figured Ophir decided to go sleep somewhere else. Um, they could not sleep, and so they stayed out in the balcony to. It kind of reminds them of, like, you know, a crow's nest of it, you know? So, um, and they just sit there. For, I, they probably kind of sleep, but not really. It's one of those things, like, did I? Did I not? I don't feel like I've rested. <laughs> That's me daily. 
every nap is just an exercise in did I rest or did I not rest? I'll never know. My body will but maybe I'm even know. more tired now. Somehow I have come back to the realm of consciousness. But Jean Paul makes the rounds, checks on everyone, and lets you know that uh morning meals are being served, or rather the dining halls available should you desire food again uh does pass by it does go to inez's room and uh does knock and has no sense of like like this is like a situation that he should feel embarrassed at at all or anything of that sort it's like yes my guess fuck that's a thing anyways carrying on uh <laughs> does knock to sort of get the attention of folk is is this Ren opening the door, just being like, oh, "Hi," re opening the door? Then then it's a uh, in the frame. I'm guessing fully nude, given the the given the situation. Uh, <laughs> no towel from the shower. They have they are freshly showered. That 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 makes it even better. <laughs> it's just the mm -hmm, most mm -hmm. the most cinema trope framework of that. You can't give it all away. That comes later. <laughs> but John Paul is like, Good morning, Ren. Good morning, Gerente. Is there a I message you have for the uh for the for the guests of this room? No, I was coming to gather you and your friends as I normally do. I had just assumed that you would be with other company. All right then. Thank you for the uh notice. Yes. Would you like me to let your friends know you will be along you will be coming along shortly? That would be very uh fine of you, thank you. I will let them know. Do enjoy yourself here. Thank you, Gerente. Thank you, manager. Uh, uh... Just kind of goes, <laughs> just closes the door respectfully. Uh, you definitely see one of those like smirks because he knows, like, <laughs> well, you're enjoying yourself. Oh, I'm not gonna say shit. I'm not gonna fuss over anybody having fun. If Ren were to quickly ask uh, Inez, for example, does Inez get pickups from uh, John, John as well? Do they also get no. summoned? No. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. If you if you asked Alana, she would say he only ever seems to it go should someone uh, go through the gallery. He essentially, he seems to make it easier to facilitate. This is sort of behind the scenes uh, view of it. Uh, the executive dysfunction that may occur in saying, I'm going to go today versus actually enacting it. John Paul kind of just skips over that whole thing by just literally going with them and being like, if you would like to go back again, I will help lead you over there. So you don't have to think out that whole process, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially for newer guests who are more inclined to be investigative. But, Interesting. But you get the sense that Jean Paul gets everybody. And he leaves you with essentially. I understand that yesterday's experience was quite difficult for some of you, if not all of you. And I wish that I could promise that it will become easier for you, depending on where you go next. But I cannot make you that promise, nor would I promise you such comforts and as a result, lie to you. I can only hope that such things will be easier on the next go around, should you be interested in continuing your pursuits. I will lead you to breakfast, should you desire food. And then as always, 
you are left to your own devices to decide what you would like to do. The choice is always is yours to make. Well, you don't have Ovaltine here, so I'm going to go down to breakfast. Over your waves from the floor. Did, did, did Ophir stay on the floor for the entire debris? Mm-hmm. Why bother getting up? I love this sad, sad boy so much. Ren is wearing extra layers, a blouse, a cardigan, and a jacket on top. <laughs> <laughs> this means we gotta go someplace warm now, just to spite you. Indeed. Uh, Ophir does get his ass up and, like, still has Ren's jacket and kind of, like, looks around, like, doesn't see him and is just like, Okay. Uh, and is just going to debate for far too long, like stare at Ren's door and debate folding it, putting it in front of the door, or just keeping it, not knowing which one like, would upset Ren, and ends up just keeping it on yeah. and heads down. Does Jimena follow as well? Um, yeah, I think they just give like a nod to John Paul and just like kind of technically followed after after Quest left since it seems like Quest was the first one to go. It's like, um, does not look at Ophir and just goes down and gets food. Yeah, there is as there was before a fantastic spread of delicious things. Many of the things you'd encountered before. And then there's also a, a couple of new additions. Let me see if I can find it. There is a seafood stew available that uh, seems to be a combination of uh, seafood, green plantains, and coconut milk. Mm. So uh, for any of you who are familiar with uh, tapado. And there also appears to be... Hmm, what is it? Other one... Ah, yes. There, there, among the condiments, there's an additional one that is a juicy tar charred tomatoes that have been mixed with onion, cilantro, mint, and lime to go along with the various kinds of breads for uh, those of you who are familiar with chiramol. Uh, but person tending to the dining hall is ever attentive as always. I believe I had said her name was Judy. Just trying to take care of all of you, but definitely, and like, doing the... Uh, doing the like auntie grandma thing of like you're gonna need more food and is like adding two or three additional servings that you necessarily even need to cover bases especially for quests there's like it's just a like thermos or a jug full of ovaltine at this point what a perfect morning this, that were me. this morning could not be better i have received <laughs> truly best ovaltine and I forget what Ophir ate the previous day. If Ophir ate anything, anything and everything. Yeah, technically, um, Jimena had like piled food on Ophir's <laughs> plate. Spicy things that he was crying about, but still eating. Right, 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 right. I'm remembering that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and which he did go to sit by Jimena, even though he immediately has that like air of like. A kicked puppy like oh no did i do something wrong she's not looking at me but still sits next to her and just is looking down not making eye contact and just you know eating very slowly and tony's gonna put food on ophir's plate when he's not looking <laughs> he just accepts this <laughs> this entire uh, campaign and group is just straight up ophir needs to fucking eat <laughs> yep and Ophir is like, Ophir needs to eat. Thank you. <laughs> uh, he did there. also take the jacket and put it on like an empty chair where Ren sat previously and just like made sure it was nice and neat and there. I, 
I asked this with good intent, I promise, Aida. Um, is Ren the kind of person who's considerate enough to notice someone doing that kind of nice thing for them? Or would they just have assumed, ah, someone is acknowledging my spot. This is wonderful. Ooh, that's a good point. <laughs> like, I don't want to be an asshole, but I'm also like, is Ren... What? Would Ren notice? I'm going to roll it back. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Lama die. Um, even <laughs> asshole, odd, not. Odd. Oh, wow. That is nice. Ren notices. That's gross. We're all surprised by Ren having consideration <laughs> of other people. That's great. But you, you see that. And I will say, because we are right at the end of our time, that there are two people who make acknowledgments to the group as we sort of fade out on this scene of folks taking in breakfast, the aftermath of processing so much shit that's just happened in the past bit of time and going through a literal other plane of maybe people who were kind of sort of alive and not alive at the same in the same time built from all of your memories. Uh, there is a, a look of Ren, if at any given point you look around the dining hall and you see Inez, uh, if you look happily, Inez does not even give you the time of day. Inez, Inez just sort of has the same stoic look that she always has all the time. And if and you, but if you catch uh, Alana's attention, Alana has the like very eager to please, like excited person's look of just like. Hi. Like very shyly every now and then looking away, but you can tell if you look every now and then back again, you'll see Alana trying to get looks of you. Inez does not look in your direction after you look. Just like, cool. People express cool story, their bro. love differently. <laughs> and for Ophir, in the midst of being fed by two, three, four different members of your party at this point, you do get just just an offer. Uh, you do have Judy does come by and does give an offer to you and says, um, uh, "Excuse me, guest of Ophir, um, if you are interested, uh, the man over there at that table is open to talking with you if you are interested." Um, and you see, just sort of at the uh, at a table in the back, just sort of smoking, like and t taking a long drag from his cigar is the same like older older I'm going to say paler skin individual very salt and peppery kind of hair same dude as before who had acknowledged who had been looking at you uh, mm -hmm. previously when he'd eaten the the previous day and just sort of like gestures over to his seat by him just to sort of like non-verbally suggest if you wanna if you wanna sit with me, you can. Oh god, this is gonna be a roll. Oh great. This is our last thing. It's so exciting <laughs> for me. I think in spite of himself and everything, it's again one of those. Jupiter, Sailor Moon, it reminds me of my ex-boyfriend. Uh, so even though he doesn't like realize it, there's a moment where he's just like, um, even though he immediately is on guard and just like, I don't like how I, I feel weird about this, but also maybe it'll be nice. And he'll just very tentatively take his drink and just slide out, step over and sit down. Nice to have you join me, kid. I'll get, uh, I'll ask Judy to get us some more things, but where are my manners? Like, puts a hand out. My name is Mr. Moses. And 
that is mm -hmm. where we're going to leave it off as uh, Ophir sat down with uh, seems to be someone who's been there for a while, a man by the name of Mr. Moses. And that is that is going to be our session for today, everybody. Thank you so much. We're going to do go around real quick. Just do uh, one thing you are listed in, and then uh, we'll do our sign-offs and all of that. So I've been Angela Lemos uh, Mogarejo. Uh, give me one second to reply to something. Uh, uh, so I have been on Hello Lemos Mogrovejo. I am the current uh, creative director for Girls Write These Worlds. We are in the midst of fast approaching the release, hopefully, of our third scene for Pride Month, specifically where one of our cast has actually contributed to it. And oh my God, I'm so excited for just everything and anything about it. It's it's amazing to have people contributing for with all manner of objects, all manner of things for Pride. And God, I'm looking forward to that. But if that is me, I'll pass it over to our fantastic producer, to Aida. Hi, everyone. Um, this was a wonderful game. My note-taking pen went <laughs> at all the drama. Much fun. Uh, you can find me at Horde of Tales, where we are dedicating the whole month to uh, women and femme exclusive tables. A lot of cast members here are making a uh, uh, appearances there. Other friends from Girls Women's Worlds are also there. And one of our uh, moments in an earlier campaign got nominated for a Crit Award, which Angela happened to be the uh, game master for. Uh, I think it's an incredibly cool crit moment that should be voted on. So definitely check out the threads when they're coming out and consider that for your vote. Please, thank you. Next up, Gina. Hi, I'm Gina. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at underscore Gina Thin, where I sometimes talk about things. Um, you can find me in terms of shows on Sword and Key, their fraying threads in Visible Sun campaign that is on Thursdays. Uh, we have two more episodes left. And if you've missed anything, they're on YouTube, but check out Sword and Key for those details. Fantastic. Moving on over to Diana. Hello, as I go by Diana Moon online, I use she her pronouns. You can find me on Twitter at Diana Moon or on Twitch and YouTube at Diana Moon X. Um, nothing happening this coming week, but yes, I will be doing something on, um, Court of Tales in two weeks, a horror game, which I'm looking forward to that Aida is the producer of. Passing it over to Alta Mirage. That's me. Wahoo. Uh, hi, I'm Alta Mirage. You can find me as Alta Mirage pretty much everywhere. Um, Alta Mirage art on Twitter. Um, I am actually in a game of Fathomless Alas for the Awful Sea, which is tomorrow. So look forward to that. I have been looking forward to this for so long. I'm so excited for it. Um and that yep, that's it. That's me. <laughs> just had to do a wind up of my brain has forgotten the following thoughts. Yep. Therefore, I'll end on mm -hmm. just excitement. And last Bra but not brain certainly, so focus, executive functioning, who knows her. Anyways, mm -hmm. our most fantastic, wonderful, and last but certainly not least, DK. Hey, hi, hello. I'm DK, and I'm going to spill Ovaltine on Mr. Moses, just so we're all aware. Uh, when I'm not here, <laughs> you can find me over on Exquisite Corpse Presents, especially this Sunday at 7 a.m. for the finale of our Thirsty Sword Lesbians Arthurian campaign. So, yep, that's me. Thanks. Fantastic. And Ooh. we are going to be sending some love over to Starlight Tales. So I'm going to go and make sure that I rate us on over. But uh, begin the process of waving awkwardly, everybody. And we will see you all next week when I am back in my place and we've got everything going. Love you all. Take Woo. care. Mwah, 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 mwah. <laughs>